Hey, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're actually going to be talking about binding. So we're carrying on with our Swift UI data flow, like many series. In the last video, we spoke about state. And if you're interested in watching that, I'll leave a link at the top here. And if you want to see the whole playlist, I'll leave a link at the top as well and in the description box. So we're going to talk about binding. So what is binding allows us to monitor changes to our state variables? So what do I mean by this? So let's say, so let's say you have a view. What you can actually do is in your view, you can declare a binding and you can actually pass in a state variable to that view. So essentially what happens is whenever the value for that state property changes, which will cause a redraw, the binding variable that you have defined would also get the same updates. So the best way to think about binding is it allows you to basically share state between different views. Also as well, binding is used as well. Binding is used in some Swift UI modifiers to actually monitor the changes to a state variable so that they can actually perform some business logic or they can actually read and write to a state variable as well. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to look at a practical example of how we can actually use a binding to communicate between two different views and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define a state um, property um, called is on to basically build like a, you know, we're going to basically build a switch that basically turns a light bulb on and off. So at the top, let's declare this. And like I specified in the previous video, in order to actually make a variable, a state variable, we need to mark it with the at state property wrapper. And also as well, it's good practice to mark your state variables as private so they don't get exposed outside of the view. What we're gonna do is in order to actually build our switch for our light bulb, we actually need to create a V stack. And within this V stack, we're going to add a switch or a toggle as it's called in Swift UI. And we're also going to build a custom view to basically bind the state variable that we just defined above. So the first thing we're going to do is define our V stack with our toggle. All right, cool. So now we've wrote this out, let's actually break it down. So what I've basically specified here in the toggle is I don't really want a label, which is why I've basically put an empty string in here. And also as well, I specified on the toggle the modifier labels hidden so that it doesn't actually have the additional space for a label. So if I actually take this off, you'll see that it spans the whole screen, which is what I don't want. So that's why we add this modifier to hide any labels and remove them. But the interesting thing here is, is in on. So what we're actually doing here is we're actually using our property that we defined above. But if you notice something, we actually have this dollar sign um, before it. So what does this dollar sign actually mean? So remember at the start where I basically said you can actually bind um, values or so you can actually bind properties to modifiers or controls. This is an example. So with toggle, what it actually allows you to do is it actually allows you to bind a Boolean property to it so that whenever you change the value for the toggle, it actually updates your state property as well. And in order to do this, you have to annotate it with the dollar sign symbol. So this essentially signifies that this is a binding to this property is on. So whenever, we change this, so if we turn this on, our state property now, the value for this is true. And if we turn this off, our state property's value is now false. All right, cool. So now what we need to do is we actually need to build a view and use the binding property wrapper to basically pass in is on into it. So let's do that now. So what I'm gonna do is in this folder, I'm just gonna basically create a new Swift UI view called light bulb view. Okay, cool. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually write out the syntax for creating a binding property. Some things to note is, as you can see with our binding property, we've done, we've not actually marked this as private and why is that? Well, essentially when you're actually using binding properties, what you wanna do is you actually want to pass in the state to it so it can actually read and actually bind the state. So if you actually change the value or you want to read the value, this binding property allows you to do that. Also as well, you'll notice that we've not given it a default value. And the reason why that is, is because like I said before, we don't actually want to use this to basically manage a state. 
We just want this property to essentially hold the state property that we define at our root in our parent. So this will allow us to access the value here. And if we need to, we can read and write to it. Now in our previews, if you're using binding, you'll actually get an error saying that this is expecting you to pass in some sort of binding variable. Now in order to fix this, what we can do is we can actually use a property. So a static function called constant to basically pass in a default value for our previews. So in our case, you can see it's expecting a binding bool. So let's do that now. And as you can see, we don't really have our errors anymore. What we need to do now is we actually need to use our binding uh, property within our view to basically toggle on our switch icon. Okay, cool. So as you can see, we basically got an image and we're using SF symbols. So if it's on, then we're going to show the light bulb fill. So what it's going to do is going to actually going to redraw this view and it's basically going to use this SF symbol for the image. And if it's false, which it is now because we define false, you'll actually see that it will use just the default light bulb to show that's like switched off. And we just basically apply some font modifiers. So what we can actually do is to actually see how this works, just like quickly in previews, we could actually group this and actually make another light bulb view and change our constant values to true to see what it looks like. So let's do that now. And as you can see, because we changed our binding to true, the view has been re-invalidated and it's now basically drawn with the fill. So what we actually want to do now is we actually want to actually see this in action without the need of actually using this group so we can actually see how binding basically changes depending on our state. So let's go back into our content view and above our toggle we're going to add in our light bulb view. As you can see in the initializer, it expects a binding boolean. So what we're going to do is pass in our is on, as you can see here. All right, cool. And because the default value for our state is false, you can see that our light bulb view gets drawn with the false image that we defined. So if we run the preview, and we actually turn this on, you'll see that our light bulb actually turns on. So how does this work? So just to go over this again, because in our toggles initializer, we're basically passing in our state property and binding it to the value for our toggle. Essentially, this is going to change the toggles variable from false to true. And then our light bulb view essentially picks up our light bulb view essentially picks up the value in our state that we pass in and basically redraws the image depending on the value. So that's why if we just go back, we can just switch our light bulb on and on and it will change based on the effect. Cool. All right, so let's just go back to our presentation. So let's discuss again, where and when would you want to use binding? So essentially you'd want to use binding if you have multiple views that need to change depending on a state. So let's say for example, if you have like a light bulb or if you have like a loading spinner that's in a completely separate view that you reuse multiple times, you probably want to use binding so that it can basically reflect the state that's being passed into it. So that's when you want to use binding. So that's everything from me in this video. If you have any feedback, leave it in the comment section below. Also as well, if you really like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for any updates. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.